All right, and welcome, Maker Campers, to Tinkering Tuesday. This is week five of Maker Camp. I'm Camp Director Nick Raymond, and today we're talking to a couple cool people. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, Madison in the front little box, uh, Alpha Camper and Walking uh, Dictionary. How's it going, Madison? Good. How's it going, Nick? Good. Thanks for being here. And then uh, in the second box, we have uh, Aaron Kennedy, a.k.a. Robot Girl, with her robot birds. Uh, how's it going, Aaron, today? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> And as always, we have the Make Labs Junior Council. We've got Dan Spangler, uh, Eagle Scout, and then uh, Julian <laughs> Benary, ex-Girl Scout. <laughs> uh, How's it going, Nick? So, so, <laughs> how's it going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and so for today, we have a couple cool things we'll be talking about. Um, robot Girl is going to talk about her robot birds, uh, how we make those, and some cool tricks with Arduino. And that is mainly because a lot of you campers out there have been asking us for more and more tutorials about Arduino. So we'll be taking your questions, uh, and uh, Jillian and Dan will be asking uh, Robot Girl uh, the questions you send us through the post. So as always, under this Hangout, write us a question or a comment, and we'll have uh, Jillian and Dan ask Robot Girl throughout the Hangout. Um, and so let's get that started. So uh, Robot Girl, how did you first get into making and building and electronics? Uh, well, I guess I first got into it with the Lego Mindstorms kit and everything like that. Very cool. I, and was that a, like a, a school project or was that a personal just interest in electronics that got you started? Well, it was sort of like, so I used to do track and feel a lot, but then one summer I was injured, so I had nothing to do. But then I got a Lego Mindstorms kit, so... That's basically how it all started from there, and then I just made lots of robots. Very cool. Uh, yeah, we'll have a couple robots here. I think Dan and Jillian have some robots uh, hanging out with you guys today, so we'll, we'll talk about those. Um, I've got a couple robots and some questions for you today. Um, so how did you develop uh, the robot bird? So it first started with um, Adafruit as actually asking me to make some, like, robot videos and they would give me some servos, some LEDs and stuff like that. This is like way before sort of Google Plus Hangouts existed and they would they were going to show the videos on their uh, Ustream broadcast and so basically I had all these servos but not very many um, building materials so I built the first robot out of pencils and popsicle sticks and then it was like, I really liked it so much that I built another one later that was a bit smaller and it had a bit better design. And then I built another one after that, which was even better, and that's actually this one. And then I sort of got into modeling the robot in CAD beforehand, and that way I could laser cut it out with precise dimensions and everything like that. Okay, so I'm noticing that your bird is going a little crazy right now. Uh, is there a reason for that, or is he he or she just hanging out with us today too? <laughs> yeah, well, so you can actually feed the robo bird um, live on air. Basically, it's a little web app that I wrote using like a virtual machine and all sorts of cool behind the scenes stuff. And I posted the link in the comments below the Hangout. Oh, okay. And tweeted it out. So if you go there and press the buttons, then the robot will be doing all this fun stuff in real life. <laughs> okay, maybe we can switch. I think you have a second screen up. Um, maybe we'll switch and show that interface. So essentially it has a picture of your, your robot bird. And then what all can we feed it? Looks like uh, uh, feed it, uh, strawberries, bananas, watermelon, oranges, or blueberries. Very cool. And so, if you click on one of those, you'll actually feed your uh, robot bird right now. Is that right? Yep, exactly. So campers can go online and then uh, they can feed the bird throughout the hangout. That'll be very cool. And so, is that like another example of how you can use Arduino as an interface with the internet and like a web browser and a little bit more advanced programming, I guess? But um, yeah, well. I guess how you can think of it is just imagine there's a computer running Linux somewhere like out in the cloud basically and then on that computer there's this program running and that program is able to 
communicate between all the different instances that are running, so like browser to browser, just opening okay. a socket to do that. And then it can communicate back to uh, processing or whatever using a different type of socket. And then from processing, you can easily communicate back to your Arduino. So there were two things in there I'm not really familiar with. Uh, I think it was sockets and um, I'll think of the next one. But are those more like just <laughs> tools that use the internet? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> there, so you said the word socketing. Um, so I'm curious, is, is that something that you use to communicate with the Arduino and the robot bird? And that's how you get the really cool interactions with like the eyes turning blue uh, when you feed a blueberry or the eyes turning red when you give it a strawberry? Is that all like um, behind the scenes, kind of like how the programming works on the internet? Well, actually, in this case, there's actually like three sockets that are running. So the first socket is from like each browser to each browser. And that's how you can see the buttons turning a darker color when someone else is pressing it. Oh, OK. And then the second socket is from the server-side code that's running, and it's basically just a TCP socket, and then that's going back into processing or whoever is uh, looking at it, and in this case, it's only me running a processing sketch. And then from processing back to the Arduino, it, I guess you could call it a socket, but not really. It's just running a serial connection and transferring a few bits, or bytes, sorry. <laughs> cool. So um, it looks like you have a couple other robot birds in the Hangout today. Uh, do you want to tell us about those? And uh, how did you make uh, those? Are those laser cut? Sure. So this one is actually kind of like a, um, oh. This one was kind of a mistake because the dimensions are actually enlarged a bit too much. But one of the fun parts is that, so I modeled the rovers in Autodesk Inventor beforehand. And then I have to export them into Inkscape. But then in Inkscape, I can go in and add all these designs to it. So that's a lot of fun. But here's an example of one where the dimensions are um, pretty much correct. And it's one of the latest versions, and it works really great. And are these kits that you're going to start offering, or can people download these um, files somewhere? Uh, the files will be up at some point. I just have like a few more bugs to fix because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I'm going to be using rivets or like, uh, like uh, screws or whatever. But yeah, essentially it will be a kit at some point in time. Very cool. And um, what else do you do online? Do you have a website or uh, like a blog? Um, yeah, I blog about various things that I do and make. Um, it's robotgirl.com. And I also host a weekly hangout called The Robot Party. And that's basically where everyone sort of gets online, <laughs> gets online and uh, talks about their robots. And it's a lot of fun. It can range from like serious, like everyone showing stuff off and it's really cool. Or it could be like one week it's all sort of theoretical discussions and all of that. Yeah, Jen and I actually, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, were on one of your robot parties. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really fun. And, uh, yeah, it was very cool. Um, yeah. All right. Well, do you want to get into the, uh, the project for today and kind of talk about what we're going to be building and uh, learning about? Yeah, sure. So what I figured would be good for today is if we can figure out how to uh, use a servo with an Arduino and then use a photo cell with an Arduino and then combine those two to have an interactive servo motor. So okay. the servos that I'm going to be using, sorry, Robert, to move you out of the way. These are the servos that I like to use a lot. They're really um, small, but good. <laughs> and what is a servo, Robot Girl? A servo is basically just a special type of 
motor. It's actually just a DC motor, but it has uh, lots of gears inside, so you can see all the gears, and it has some uh, feedback functions inside of itself as well, so that way it can run really smoothly. And the way servos actually work is off of um, this thing called PWM, which is pulse width modulation. Okay. Basically, it's just a way to uh, sort of make an analog signal using digital. So basically, if you imagine um, a, light, a light switch, uh, you can turn it on, turn it off. Okay. Then say if you wanted to um, make like make it dim or or uh, stuff like that, like really bright but not too bright or dim, then uh, you could just uh, like flick the switch really quickly, and that could okay. give you the effect that you're looking for. And basically, um, the moments between when the uh, light switches off and then on is sort of creating this um, effect that's uh, PWM. Now cool. there's a lot better explanations of it online <laughs> and the math for it is really fun as well. So you just Google like PWM Arduino, there's a really cool tutorial on it on their website. Okay, so that reminds me, um, what are some good uh, places to go either online or some resources for learning more about kind of like servos and Arduinos? Um, Dan, I know you've learned a lot about uh, servos and motors from working at Make Labs. Um, maybe you and Robot Girl could talk about some places that we could have campers go to to learn more if they're interested. Mm -hmm. Well, where I first learned um, Arduino was from uh, Adafruit's website. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually uh, I got my first Arduino from Maker Faire. I oh, got really? the ultimate Arduino kit set, and the tutorials on the uh, Arduino website were more than enough to teach me everything I needed and now to uh, get started with Arduino. So Arduino has a pretty good, uh, pretty good website, and they have tutorials. Yeah, and as far as servos, um, I had previous experience with servos when I was into professional RC car racing and, and whatnot, so I knew what was inside of the server and how they worked and all that kind of stuff like that, so. Very cool. I know, too, we also, um, I'm really a big fan of um, the Arduino Cookbook. Um, it's an awesome book that we have. Um, it's published by O'Reilly, and we have it in the Maker Shed. Uh, this is actually the first edition, um, and um, it's by um, Michael, oh, I'm going to butcher that, Michael... Marvelous. So sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, but it's an awesome book. It has lots of um, pictures and examples I can show you. Uh, really cool illustrations. Um, and then he provides all the uh, code for you. Um, and you can either download the code on the website or you can do a bunch of examples. And essentially it's just like a cookbook, right? So if you want to use, you know, servos, there's a really quick example for servos. And then um, if you want to do maybe like motors or LEDs, uh, you can just skip through the pages and find a bunch of different examples, and you can kind of build them together one by one. Um, ah, excuse me. Margulis is his name. Um, and they have the Arduino Cookbook uh, Edition 2 also online in a PDF form. Kind of cool. I use it a lot for the robots that I make. Um, but, yeah. What kind of robots do you make, Nick? Um... Well, I showed this one previously um, in a, the Stop Film Animation Hangout. I'm trying to kind of turn this yeah. little green robot into um, like an actual robot. Um, so this is like the droid from Google and, and Android and Jelly Bean 4.1, the operating system. And I want to eventually add a servo um, on his head and give him some, some features where he can move his head, maybe have the lights flash and blink. Um, and then inside is going to be, if you can see it, the, uh, the Arduino. Um, Maybe have a mm -hmm. And then there'll be a servo. Um, and so maybe later on in the Hangout, uh, Robot Girl can give me some ideas for how to make it uh, function a little bit better. How about, uh, Jillian, do you and Dan have some robots you guys are building in the Make Labs? Dan's got uh, some sophisticated ones. I have. This is the first one that I started building, and you were helping me, Nick. And we still need to finish it. Um, but I think that's got a, what is that, a servo and a motor shield? Is that right? Yeah, I think that uses uh, the... Um, Adafruit Motor Shield. 
Uh, mm -hmm. which has inputs for servos and for stepper motors, and then there's that cool frame you can get with the wheels. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the only one that I built, but Dan has a bunch of really cool ones. Uh, we have a drummer bot, which is a little search and drum bot, I guess. And it finds... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Nick has one, too. And uh, it uses the... Uh, you know, the ultrasonic rangefinder in the front of it to uh, find objects. And then once it gets close to it, it'll use these little drumsticks to uh, tap out a tune. There's like, you know, several different tunes. And what's kind of interesting is it has a mic on it, so it'll uh, sample its own noises and uh, play them back for uh, different kinds of tunes. That's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> have you used it to find anything? Uh, no, it doesn't really have a camera on it, so. It, it wouldn't be able to give us any kind of feedback as far as uh, finding things. But well, that's an interesting that question. Is um, maybe for Robot Girl, how what other kind of sensors besides a servo could you add on to um, the robot bird, or like any kind of robot for that matter? Uh, well, there's lots of sensors around. Um, it all really depends on what type of uh, environment your robot is going to be in. Oh, okay. So, for example, you could have stuff from, like, uh, ultrasonic sensor, like this one, for measuring distance. That's cool. Or you could have a robot that's, that exists only in virtual form that's doing data mining on, like, say, weather feeds to give you the weather, or on Twitter. Um, or you could also have <laughs> a PIR sensor, and this would detect motion and... Um, it, PIR sensors are really fun to play with because they're sort of glitchy in a weird way, which <laughs> makes them really fun. <laughs> what and are your you favorite have... sensors to work with, Robot Girl? Pardon? What are your favorite sensors that you like to work with? Um, my favorite sensors are, uh, well, my newest favorite one is this uh, whole web app thing. I think that's that's a lot of fun, so like GCP sockets. Mm -hmm. um, photo cells are really good because I find they work reliably. And it's just like wherever there's light, you can use a photo cell. Um, distance sensors, I don't really enjoy them that much because you usually have to have a wheeled base for distance sensors to be applied properly. And mm -hmm. I don't enjoy wheeled robots. Um, switches are cool too. I enjoy the switches that are like this type that are really springy switches. Kind of like the momentary, um, like limit switches? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and actually there's this cool sensor that I was working on. Let me see if I can find it. Sure. So, um, a friend who's on the robot party He's made this thing like a DIY laser scanner uh, sort of sensor. <laughs> and laser wow. scanners are typically used in like, those Google cars and everything like that. So what he did was he used um, the camera from a Wii remote, like the Nintendo Wii remote thing, mm -hmm. and then also like a laser. And then when this is rotating back and forth, uh, this guy can emit uh, like four points of where it sees the laser dot, so you can easily do like uh, some cool object detection with this. And plus, it just looks cool to have like a DIY laser scanner on your robot. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Very cool. So I think before I got us off on a tangent, you were teaching us how to use a servo with an Arduino, and then yeah. whatever. So like, there's pulse width modulation, and that's how we kind of control the the servo. Is that right? Now, uh, for connecting the servo, basically what we're going to do, <laughs> if you can kind of tell with the mess of wires. <laughs> um, so here's our main Arduino right here, and uh, I have the rails connected to five volts and ground. And um, along these uh, pins, sort of right there, 
that's where I'm going to be putting basically all, all of our servos. So what you want to do when you're connecting a servo is do like uh, a pin that has the little tilde uh, next to it on the Arduino. So say like um, 11, 10, 9, 6, 5, 3. That means it can do PWM. And they work really good with the servo library. So you get um, a jumper from one of those to the breadboard, and then a jumper from 5 volts and then into the next row, and then ground and then into the next row. So if you actually look at the wire on the servo, it's like it's yellow, red, brown, or white, red, brown. Um, that sort of gives you a hint on what, what, uh, what wire should be going there. So uh, let me just plug in here the servo that I'll be using. This is actually Robert's right wing. So I hope. No, that was actually its beak. Sorry, Robert. All right, right wing. So that's this guy. And I'll just plug it in like that. And if we switch over to the code cam, <laughs> then, okay, we'll switch over to the code cam. <laughs> then basically what you can see here is I started a new Arduino sketch, and the first thing that I want to do is add in the servo library because I'm going to need that. And then I name out three servos that I have, um, and then I list out what pins they are on. So, for example, the one that I'm going to be using right now is on pin number 11. And just, there we go. And then, uh, so, so we have our servo attached here. And what we'll want to do first is basically move it around. And one of the ways I like to do it first is just start off with a really simple for loop going from uh, 0 to 180. And then, what did I name my servo R wing? And are those degrees, Robot Girl, or are those like seconds? What is the what is the zero to one hundred and eighty? I actually I have no idea what it is. <laughs> it's just some arbitrary value that I think is supposed to represent degrees. But sometimes when you play with your servo, you notice it goes a little bit more than one hundred and eighty degrees, even though on the spec sheet it says one hundred and eighty. <laughs> so. Uh, if you just sort of think of it as some arbitrary value, sort of representing degrees, then uh, you can't go wrong there. But <laughs> one of the cool parts is that um, with this, we'll be able to sort of uh, create baselines as to what the values will mean. So, Make sure we uh, set the board right. I always mess up on this stuff. <laughs> oh, so when you're using the Arduino software, you want to make sure that you uh, you make sure you know what kind of Arduino board you're talking to, right? Because there's different versions. Um. Yeah, that, and you may be debugging for a while when you shouldn't be because <laughs> it's loading. <laughs> and um, if you're interested in Arduino, what sort of basic um, programming skills should you kind of know about? Is it um, like a C++ or a form of C uh, is like the, the code base? So the code base for Arduino is basically C, C++ ish. Okay. But when you're writing it, um, it's very good what Arduino has been able to do. <laughs> they kind of make it simplified and kind of have some, some yeah. you know, a library essentially is like a pre-compiled set of code, right, that you can use. So that that servo library that you set, you have the top, um, yeah. Somebody already compiled a bunch of code together, so you can use these simple commands. It's so simple, even I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you what have you done so far, Jillian, with with Arduino? Um, well, it's not it wasn't with this one, but we had um we had a, a little project that we did where um we had an Arduino and we hooked up an LED to it and had to write code to make it blink and blink on different um different kind of time lapses or or 
there we made them fade in and out and so there the Arduino site has a ton of great resources especially for simple stuff like that if you don't know how to write code you can still start playing with Arduino and it's essentially just like copy and paste it's almost like the cookbook you were talking about mm -hmm. um, where you just pick the things you want and as long as you copy and paste and don't drop out any of the characters you can actually make it do stuff it's it's awesome <laughs> very cool so as you can see right here, the servo is moving the wing up and down. And since we have the serial monitor open and we're printing out basically the uh, values that the servo is going to, it's a really good thing to be able to list out like when the wing um, goes up as far as it should and when it goes down. Because, yeah. for example, you don't want it to go down farther than... Uh, the rover's space, basically. Because it so, kind of smash his arm into the desk or whatever he's like sitting yeah, on. Exactly. So when you get those values, basically, I usually like to create two sort of constant values that list them there, and then that way I can just use that as a basic baseline. Okay. Um, and then, so then it gets a little bit easier. So, like, then you can pretty much just delete that and just do, um, uh, let's see. And then. So I'm actually curious, Madison, have you, uh, have you ever built a robot or something kind of similar? I've done a, a lot of snap circuits, including a little, uh, mobile unit that's kind of like a robot. It moves slowly, very slowly. Very slowly? Like a toddler can beat it. <laughs> if it was racing it? <laughs> and then in getting ready for today's Hangout, did you, uh, did you build something you want to show yeah. off? I built a little bird. Very cool. What, uh, what material did you use for that? Uh, this is a combination of uh, toothpicks, of staples, an aluminum foil, along with a couple of the penguins that I had to kill to get the clay. <laughs> awesome. So those penguins you had made of clay, and then you use that for the body, or? Yes, and the head. And the head. Very cool. And so you think you could add, uh, eventually add some movement to your uh, to your penguin smashing bird? I can make it go like this using my hand. <laughs> Whoa, it's flying! Yeah, so as soon as you get basically the maximum and minimum values, it gets a lot easier to make like pretty much custom routines that uh, make the servos do pretty much what you want like that. So, <laughs> so the next thing that we want to do is actually um, look at a sensor for a robot. Um, so, like I said before, the photo cells are pretty good sensors. Uh, let's see if the camera can focus. There we go. Yeah. Oh, no. no one's had it. Focus. <laughs> All right, it's not going to focus, but basically... We saw it for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a photo cell, you get these cool, like, squiggly lines on it. That's mm -hmm. basically how it detects the light. It's really cool. Um, and... Uh, the way to hook it up to, um, say, an Arduino is uh, just basically uh, connect it as well as with the resistor. <laughs> so the whole circuit would be like going from, say, 5 volts into the sensor, and then uh, on the other side of the sensor you have a wire directly going into one of the analog inputs right there, and then you have a resistor um, also on the same end of the sensor going to ground. And with that, wait, let's see if we can get that. And then with that, you can actually sort of uh, like, uh, yeah, read the sensor. So we'll do basically the same thing here. Cons int um, LDR. And so, so Robot Girl, can I ask you, um, why would we, would we want to add 
a light sensor to our robot? What would that, what feature would that kind of enable us to do? Um, well, it would be able to detect shadows. So say if you had your hand moving in front of the robot, then you would be able to sort of detect that. You can detect if a flashlight's on your robot. Um, they're really cool for like actually proximity sensing <laughs> for some reason. Or you can just like make a robot that senses light. Like there's a lot of photovores out there that are able to uh, sense the light. Okay. So we're going to put the um, LDR pin, since it's an analog input, we're going to specify input. We usually don't have to really do that, though, so don't worry about it if you miss it. We'll show your uh, code for you. Yeah. And then after that, what you want to do is just print out whatever. <laughs> I think someone's feeding Robert a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> Is Robobird getting pretty full? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so what is uh, what is LDR again, Robot Girl? Uh, LDR is the pin that our light sensor is on, so analog. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to upload the code now. Oh. Oh, I'm stuck in China made that mistake. You know, when I was first starting programming, all the time I forgot the semicolons. <laughs> so the compilers would always just yell at me with their like angry red text saying, you forgot a semicolon. And I'd have to go through all the lines. That's awesome. So if you don't have the semicolon, the little program gets angry at you, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess if you personalize it. <laughs> So, on the screen, you probably can't see it because the text isn't big enough. Mmm. Chucks. But anyway, what it's printing out is different values that the sensor has. And then, okay. as I move my hand in front of the sensor and sort of lock off the light, then the value goes lower. And then it goes higher when it sees the light again. So, since we're building a robot, what we always want to do is... Uh, Make sure that it has sensors so that it can basically react to its environment, or <laughs> so that it can sense its environment, and then through its actuators, it can interact with its environment. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is basically um, figure out a maximum and minimum value for the sensor. So right now, it, it looks like its maximum could be about 500, and then its minimum, maybe like. 60-ish, uh, 50, then we'll write those down. So Robot Girl, can I ask you, and maybe ask the group, um, you were talking about, it's a really good point, how you have to have sensors so that the, the robot can kind of get a sense of where it is in the environment, and then it has the motors to kind of react. Is there like an actual definition of a robot? I don't know, maybe you can ask the group, maybe some of the campers who are watching. That's a really good question. Comments, like, what do you think a robot is, and is there a, is there a definition? Um, I honestly just think as long as it can sense and interact to its world, and generally the only exception that I found to that rule is with bristle bots or styrobots or vibrobots, things like that, because mm -hmm. they basically use the, the uh, I guess chaos is sort of a funny word to use here, but the chaos of the system to make it interact with its environment. So like the tilted angle of the bristles on a bristle bot make it move in different directions. Or on a styrobot, it's the pipe cleaner around the edge of the circle. Um, or the draw bots even where it's the uh, masses inside of the cup with the three, uh, three markers that make it spin around in different directions. It's just... That's, so that's the only exception I've been able to find to that mm. uh, definition of a robot. But there's also the tin robots, or like tin toy robots that you see in like really old museums and stuff. And they're just like pictures of robots. And the reason why they're a robot is because they look like this thing that we imagine a robot to be. <laughs> so 
I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Madison, what do you think about? Uh, you're kind of our living uh, dictionary. What do you think about a robot or a definition for a robot? After hearing, well, uh, I think robot. there are two different types of robots. One is where well, it does a program, but it um, kind of like a machine. The other one is more of a classic image of a robot, like oh. like the bird or the android robot, where. So it's kind of like a robot that is actually like a, a machine kind of thing, and there's a robot as of what we think a robot should look like. Like an android or a ro or a bird where it doesn't do as much, but it's got more of that classic robot image that it comes to mind when we think of the word robot. Or kind of like the uh, the logo on your shirt for Maker Camp. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We've got our first question. All right, let's have it. Uh, Pierce wants to know, can you overfeed RoboBird? That is a great uh, question. <laughs> so the way the, the algorithm, <laughs> if you can even call it that, works for feeding the RoboBird or its counting is that I think each second it gets more hungry and less happy. But say if you feed it a lot and the hungriness goes to zero, and then you feed it some more, it will just go to the negative numbers. <laughs> Storing it away for the future. Yeah. So that's an interesting question, too. Um, we had, earlier before the Hangout started, we had uh, the whole office was kind of playing with this app that Robot Girl created. Um, and everyone was going crazy trying to feed it, you know, the blueberries and the strawberries, see its eyes light up. Um, Robot Girl, what happens if multiple people hit the button at the same time? Can the robot bird get too full and kind of freak out? or? Um, as for the queuing of the messages that are coming in, I've been trying to figure that out myself. Right now it's just pretty much uh, the first message goes to the robot. Um, but it depends on how much has to be done inside of the robot's uh, main loop, basically. Mm -hmm. So for example, I was testing it with the uh, check for the NFC hats, but it didn't work as well. Um, even though that check is only a few milliseconds, few, yeah, few tens of milliseconds long. And so I guess it really depends on how fast your uh, robo brain is going. <laughs> <laughs> where, do you get, where do you get your ideas for what you want the robots to do? Like, how did you come up with the idea of feeding it fruit? Yeah. Um, mainly it's all just like I wanted to experiment with um, Amazon EC2, so like web apps that work with Google Hangouts. And then I needed some way to relate it back to real life instead of pressing buttons aimlessly. So. <laughs> Here it's pressing buttons, but they mean food. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's so. interesting, too, because um, I was going to ask, I know Dan is really into kind of designing and um, engineering kind of like larger robots, kind of like mechs. Uh, maybe, Dan, you want to talk about that? Um, but I'm also just curious kind of how, maybe, Dan, how you would incorporate, like, machine parts into some kind of a bigger robot structure, and then how, how Robot Girl, maybe afterwards, how you can incorporate the servos to get the movement that you want. Uh, with larger robots, it's more complicated because you need larger equipment. So I find the greatest engineering challenge for me is figuring out how to uh, make large parts with small machines mm -hmm. is a big one. Uh, the other thing is a uh, power plane. You know, it's easier with these smaller robots because they can usually be plugged into the wall or they can be powered by conventional alkaline batteries. But with a, with a larger mech, uh, batteries get too heavy and their power density isn't high enough for uh, effective use. So I've resorted to using um, uh, small gas turbine jet engine generators, uh, even up to um, experimenting with uh, portable nuclear reactors. <laughs> That'd be a pretty crazy uh, power plant for a robot. Wow. Uh, yeah. It'd be a very large robot. <laughs> and if you were, if you were, when you're designing these robots, Dan, are you are you inside the mech, or is it like a big? big yes, like... um, it's a it's a primarily a piloted thing, but there would be uh, automatic systems that would 
work in relationship with the uh, operator. And where so do you there find would all be your some information? Uh, automation to the whole thing, but it's mostly up to the operator for the final decision. It's, sim it's really similar to like what drums are now. You know, they can fly, you know, days on end without assistance, but if it comes down to the real decisions, there's always a human operator behind the uh, button. And so where would you get a lot of your inspiration for the uh, the mech designs that I've seen you draw and uh, you um, audit for? I, I watch a lot of uh, sci-fi movies, cartoons, and anime. <laughs> That's probably a lot of my ideas. <laughs> Robot girl, do you just like birds, or where did the inspiration come from for your robot yeah. bird? Um, I, well, you probably hear this a lot, but it, it kind of reminds me of the um, uh, I can't remember Angry name. Birds. Angry Birds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that for sure. I dislike wheeled robots a lot, so okay, I want to make one of those. There's just so many of them. Did you ever try to experiment with, uh, you know, legs? You know, like a spider or a biped even? Yeah, actually, that was one of my uh, first tasks or first challenges after getting out of Lego. So I got this humanoid robot, and I wanted to make it play hockey. Except <laughs> that I didn't really know much about, like, servos at the time, so it ended up melting the gears inside of its knee <laughs> servos. <laughs> So I never really made it walk, but it was skating uh, around playing hockey, which is pretty funny. Were you were you using like predetermined uh, pre-programmed walk cycles, or were you actually using like an active balancing system? Yeah, it was just uh, pre-programmed gates. I haven't okay. gone into the kinematics yet. Okay, cool. So, so we have the. Uh, oh, sorry. Was that? Well, I was just going to say, with uh, like my mechs, they're going to be bipedal, but they'll rely on the human innate ability to balance the, uh, uh, the entire mech. That's cool. Yeah. So we actually have uh, Pierce wrote in with a definition for us. Um, so he's saying a robot, um, first definition is a machine that resembles a human and does uh, mechanical routine tasks on command. Okay. Uh, then the second definition he found was a person who acts and responds in a mechanical routine manner, uh, usually subject to others' will and automation. Okay. And then the third one, um, any machine or mechan mechanical device that operates automatically with human-like skill. So that kind of reminds me of what Dan was talking about and the mechs and kind of <laughs> how they would kind of mimic, you know, larger kind of human functions. <laughs> and then I also like, like uh, they were talking about earlier with the... Uh, uh, tin machines from the earlier ages, the, the automa, automat. Automata? Yeah. Automata. Automata. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Automata. Um, they, they do like a routine uh, mechanical function, but it, with like human like um, dexterity. You know, like writing or drawing. Or, yeah. Or or like what Nick's robot. doing. <laughs> they can dance. <laughs> 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 so here is basically how you can get a sensor to work with your servo. Oh, that's awesome. When I'm moving my hand closer to the sensor, the wing is uh, moving up and then moving down. Then if you like, kind of go like that. And then that is so cool. So you're totally yeah. interacting with the photo sensor and then causing the wing to move. And that's all based on the code, right? Yeah, and so if you jump back to the code screen, basically okay. all that it's doing is... Um, calculating out a uh, scaled value of the light sensor from those minimum and maximum values that we measured, and mm -hmm. then mapping that to the right wing's um, minimum and maximum values. So it makes it uh, quite good for interacting really easily. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, Robot Girl, what kind of uh, what kind of robots do you want to work on in the future? Do you have any kind of um, upcoming projects, or maybe like even farther off, a couple of years from now? What do you want to be working on? Um, I want to work on a robot that would be a new kitchen appliance. Um, oh, what would it do? I, yeah. Um, I also want to make more robot creatures that look like this. <laughs> um, 
oh, this is something fun at Maker Faire Bay Area. I actually uh, played with some little bits inside of like an empty Robo Bird. And that was like a lot of fun. So <laughs> maybe I want. And what are those? What are those? Uh, those are like computer parts, right? Or those are an actual another um, like microcontroller? The itty, itty bits? Is that what they're called? Little bit. <laughs> <laughs> little bits, <laughs> itty bits, oh, itty bits, right. after little bits. <laughs> I don't know, maybe itty bits is a new thing, but uh, <laughs> the little bits are basically like <laughs> magnet uh, components on magnets. Like you have a LED and it has magnets. <laughs> and you like connect them together, function. right? Each cube yeah. is a function, and mm -hmm. you can connect them together to create yeah like, and, programs or systems. And they were they were developed by. Um, I uh, Badir, and I think they're mm -hmm. kind of like, they just fit together, right? And so it's like, you know, you have a motor and the motor board, and they fit together, and then you have like an L LED or whatever Dan was saying, and they fit together. Um, right. It's kind of like snap, and they make kind of programming and computers um, a little bit easier. Yeah, because some of them are sensing, and some of them are moving, and they all have different either input right. or output. Right, right. But they're all made to, to work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so, Robot Girl, you put those in an empty robot bird, and... Um, yeah. It was actually working okay? Yeah, it worked pretty good. Uh, like some of their logic ones weren't working for me for some reason. Maybe I was doing it wrong, but I made a really simple one and inside of the Robo bird case and it actually like they all fit exactly perfectly. So I was thinking maybe I want to make robots like that too. Like just Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I know that um Aya was at the Hardware Innovation Workshop, um, and she also ran an open source workshop. Um, so you probably found out more information online um, about little bits. Um, are you going to be at the the Hardware Innovation uh, Workshop next year? You think, Robot Girl? Uh, if I don't get uh, too distracted by laser cutters again, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. No one blames you for that. <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the open hardware workshop at um, at Maker Fair, right? Um, the yeah, hardware innovation workshop. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was at the Maker Fair Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah, we had it that same week as Maker Fair Bay Area. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'll definitely be going to the open hardware oh. summit. Uh, Sorry, there's two things. My, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> there's the oh open source hardware, and that's in New York City, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's basically how you can create a simple robot with just a servo and a little sensor. And then it's, all, it's really cool because it's like you could make it play music if you were, like, musically inclined. So, Very cool. So, Madison, if you were going to design a robot, what do you think, uh, what would your robot do and what would it look like? I think it would hold papers and pens and keep, uh, uh, and pencils and keep them all sharp, sharpened. Because I'm in the because whenever I'm in the middle of making something or writing something down, I hate having to get up and get some paper or sharpen my pencils. I, and I just think it, the outside would look very co cool and shiny and what well, is the traditional image of the robot? That'd be cool. Like yeah, I, I hate when my like my pencil breaks and I'm sketching or something. <laughs> um, you have to go sharpen it. You have to get up. You kind of lose your thought. You kind of forget what you were talking about or forget what you were writing about. It would be very cool if you had like an automatic robot that would eat your pencils and sharpen them for you, spit them out, could sense when you want new paper. <laughs> very cool. It sense when the stack gets lower. Yeah. Or you could even make a robot that uh, works with your brain waves, so you wouldn't need the pencil and paper. Whoa. <laughs> Is that even possible? Yeah. Um, awesome. You can measure the amount of focus that you have really reliably now with some of the sensors. Um, Does that go negative also? <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. negative focus. <laughs> you have to really concentrate. Then it tells you, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some that can actually identify like 
letters or words that you're thinking of. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. So, but it, it kind of like requires like previous training in order for it to work, and you have to like tune the machine to the specific operator. But yeah, you we're getting close to uh, thought control machinery. Wow. That would save you a lot of work if you had to write a really long essay for for school or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or then you could just Strap mind control. Your yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can mind control the robo bird and feed it strawberries with your brain waves. <laughs> while, while simultaneously like writing the essay about yeah, robot. Exactly. <laughs> or you can mind control the robo bird to write the essay for you and you can eat the strawberries. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> That'd be even better. <laughs> So, Robot Girl, do you have, uh, I think before the Hangout was starting, you had a, a hat on your bird with some badges. Do you do, like, uh, like what, what are the badges about? Can you tell us about that? I don't know where it was. It was it just a few. Robot Bird was so full of strawberries, it was, like, yeah. freaking out and, like, threw the hat away. It's like, I'm full. I don't want to have it anymore. <laughs> Okay, so the batches, the whole batches thing is like so cool nowadays. Um, so <laughs> I, cool I guess you sort of know how there's like um, uh, Girl Scout and I guess Boy Scout badges. Yeah, like merit badges for when you like accomplish something and you know campfires or I don't know. Dan, <laughs> you know about merit badges, right? <laughs> I like to put up the sparkles. These are basically the badges, but for like really useful skills, like building a robot, or learning Jada, or learning Python, and they're all from Adafruit's uh, website. They even have like this badge, like community system thing, Jiggy, where you can see who has what badge and everything like that. So that's okay. a robot badge there. So Very how, cool. You've how definitely can I earn earned a badge. It. <laughs> Wait, what? So, I, I, what did you say, Jillian? Oh, I just told her she definitely earned the robot badge. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. That. <laughs> well, so how how can I earn a robot badge if I have like a robot project going on, or any kind of badge for that matter? Yeah. Um. Well, for a lot of the badges, they have these skill requirement sheets, and basically it lists out what you need to do to accomplish the skill. Like, I guess for their soldering badge, then you would need to solder, like, a minty boost or maybe, like, solder a motor shield or solder mm -hmm. something like that. <laughs> and then you could maybe show it to your teacher and then they could ask out of for a badge for you or something like that. Or you could just buy the badge. But <laughs> Or, oh, yeah, how you get the skill badge is you show it on their show and tell. And then they wow. give you the badge. Right. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I was actually on that pretty recently, uh, talking about Maker Camp. It was really fun. You can just um, you go onto uh, Adafruit's website, and they have a, a page that tells you how to do it. Or you can just go and make projects. Or sorry, uh, Google Plus. Um, and you leave a comment for uh, Lady Ada, and you say, I want to hang out with you for the show and tell. And they'll invite you. And then uh, you can show off your cool projects, get a badge. That'd be pretty cool. Awesome. They even have like a Tesla coil badge, and it's all like. I'd be sure Dan, right? Dan is Tesla coil. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, so uh, Robot Girl, will you be at Maker Fair New York? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> That's coming up pretty soon, right? Julian, do you know the dates or? Uh... Yeah, it's going to be the last weekend in September, the 29th and the 30th of September. Okay, and so mm -hmm. are, those are probably tickets are available, and yeah. um, you can check out the website. Um, yeah, well, we hope to see you there, Robot Girl. Um, I'll definitely be at the Mini Maker Fair Montreal, though, which is coming up soon. Is that awesome. where you live? Uh, uh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> Do you know the dates for that, uh, Robot Girl, the Montreal Mini uh, Maker Fair? I believe it's August 25th and 26th. It's also, like, it's going on the same time as the Experience MTL event, so... It's basically going to be a lot of music and then also makers there. So Spike Kenzie Labs will be there. There will be the Canadian Drones there. Um, the Now Leech will be there. And 
and Leet was actually at Maker Fair New York last year. Uh, Foo Lab will be there, I think. Um, I, I, I'm probably missing a few key people, but uh, yeah, a Very lot cool. of cool projects. And you'll be showing off your robot birds and uh, just hanging out. Very cool. Yep. Why does the robot bird have a little circular thing that looks like it has multicolored pipe cleaners around it? This is actually a hula hoop. So I thought so. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So on its back, it has a little DC motor. Well, it's not really that little, but mini-ish. And then this thing that can sort of push against it. And then when it gets triggered, then uh, sometimes you can see the hula hoop jiggle a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, Robot Girl, when is uh, when's your next robot party? And uh, if people want to know more about that, how could they get involved? So, the next robot party is on Thursday. It's actually every week on Thursday, and uh, it's at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. California time, and. Uh, to get involved, you can just circle me on Google Plus, and then each week I post about the robot party. Sometimes I upload pictures <laughs> and uh, all that, so that's where you can get all the details. Awesome. And uh, you also have a couple of Make Project articles, don't you? Um, yep. You kind of show how to make more. What, what do you show in those Make Project articles? And um, yeah. Um, the first one that I wrote was about the original RoboBird. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of a big project compared to the smaller ones. And then I also wrote one for the Cloud Robotics Hackathon, and that was about uploading your robot sensor data to ThinSpeak for, like, Internet of Things. And uh, I think I might have also written one about one of my apps for Arduino things. Very um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you want, if you want to learn more about that, you can always check out the Make Projects website um, and see what Robot Girl is working on. Uh, Robot Girl, before we head out, do you have anything else you want to say for the project, or um, maybe some websites that we can find out more information about you and your projects? One more time. Uh, sure. So you can check out my website over at robotgirl.com, and uh, for Robert's website, it's sort of. I'm still sort of constructing it. <laughs> so I'm feeding Robert bananas. <laughs> um, Robert's website is robobird.com. And uh, I guess if there's just one last thing that I could say, it would be um, make your robots, but then make sure they have some sort of personality to them as well. That's where it gets really fun. <laughs> That's a great tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jan, uh, Dan and uh, Jillian, any more questions from the campers? Or any last comments for Robot Girl before we head off? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Robot yeah. Girl. It's been thank so you. fun hanging out with you. <laughs> thank you. It's been a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, very cool. So thank you so much, Aaron, uh, Robot Girl, for uh, hanging out today and showing us how to make robot birds and some cool Arduino skills. Um, and thank you again to Madison for hanging out and showing us your, uh, your cool bird. Uh, hopefully you'll post some pictures on a... Uh, Maker Camp hashtag and uh, share with us. And then Dan it. and Julian, as always, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, awesome. hopefully we see you at Maker Fair New York, Robot yeah. Girl. Yep. Definitely, definitely. And be sure, all the campers watching, to, to use the Maker Camp hashtag to share pictures of your robots and um, contact Robot Girl or uh, any of us in the Hangout today for more information about the project. And uh, for tomorrow, uh, we will be having Squishy Circuits with Anne Marie. We'll show you how to make some cool conductive Play Doh and uh, make some circuits with some cool uh, kind of molding sculpting features. Uh, and then also we'll have the Junior Counselor Hangout in about half an hour. And today, Robot Girl will be joining us. So if you have questions specifically for Robot Girl and you want to join that Hangout, just uh, leave us a comment under this post. And we'll add you to the circles and send the invite out in about 30 minutes or so from now. And uh, again, thanks, everybody. And uh, see you guys later. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>